Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get this 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass for the first time running in two years, the seller says. So story on this thing is, one of my scrap guys, always be in touch with your local automotive recyclers. Scrap right now, he said, is about 70 bucks a ton. So this car weighing at 3,500 pounds is not even worth $150. So it's like 110, 120 bucks. He called me, he said, hey, I got this car, picked it up. I'm guessing he got it for nothing. And he said, hey, you give me more than scrap for it, I'll even deliver it. And I said, absolutely. So I asked him a couple questions. I said, has it got a title? When was it run last? What's wrong with it? He said, first gear is out. These people were using it as their field car. They never put the title in their name. So two years, they said. They didn't say a couple, they didn't say a few. They said two years. So we'll say 2021. So it should be pretty easy to get running. I asked if it had disc brakes. He said, yes, crawl underneath and unhook the chain. It's got drum brakes, not a big deal, but the disc brakes were an option on a lot of 68, 72 GM. So if you wanted to, you know, upgrade your GTO or your Chevelle or your Cutlass 442 to disc brakes, these are good donors, but this does not have disc brakes. So let's take a look at this thing. First thing I noticed was all the decals all over it. So I know somebody beat the ever living snot out of it because People who put decals all over their stuff are just hard on things. Like TC Bros choppers, ready lift. Oh, they were motorcycle folks, apparently. And then, you know, you always get a free Summit Racing decal with your order. Thrush, rough country, definitely doesn't have a lift kit, air lift. So maybe she's got some air shocks. Here's another Summit equipped with super springs. So I'm guessing these guys had a farm or a truck shop or something. I don't know. So anyway, they were making it look like a race car. It had one tire that held air. Look, it's got these great big giant racing one inch lug nuts. Oh yeah, real fast. And more stickers back there was that melling oil pumps. So I had to put, donate some wheels and tires. And then the other thing we noticed is it's got a hood pin, but it's trunk pin. And they only got it on one side. So, you know, race car things. She's a little rotten right here on both sides. You know, it's got the typical rot down in the bottoms of the rear quarters, the dog leg of the quarter, the dog leg of the fender. Somebody took the cutlass emblems off. But overall, it ain't a bad looking car. The front end's super straight, pretty dang nice. Looks like probably towing it. You knocked a rock out there. This clip is kind of hanging on for dear life. She's a hybrid rot in the hood there. But yeah, it's it's not a bad rig. Looks like it's been repainted. I'm guessing it was this kind of metallic light green originally. It's a post car. It's got a lot of stainless on it yet though. There's just a lot of good pieces here. We couldn't we couldn't say no. The rear speaker deck's gone. It's notorious for these things to rot out right here. And it wasn't a vinyl top car, so that saved the top. I believe the chassis is the same, 6872, whether it's Chevelle, GTO, Le Mans, I could be wrong. But if we can get this thing running and driving, and if we can find a two-door, we can set it right on here. And the front clip will bolt right on if we can find a, another Oldsmobile. They have patched the floors. They didn't do the worst job of it either though. I could see that it had like some aluminum pedal covers in the pictures. Looks like somebody hacked a stereo in it. They took the headliner out for us already. That's nice. Seats are pretty roachy. Yeah, that's definitely that factory color, which is kind of a cool color, unfortunately. Apparently the roof or the window or something leaks because she's pretty soggy in the carpet back here. So that's not helping out the situation. Let's uh, pop the trunk off. Looks like we got all the factory hub tabs. Heck yeah. All four of them. Look at this wheel. Somebody just welded some giant washers on there. Maybe that's the reason for the giant lug nuts. We got a 15 inch four and three quarter wheel. That's like gold. Yeah, floors are not terrible, but they're not good back here either. She ain't the worst car. Somebody kind of beat up the trunk lid, getting that lock out of there. Oh, Chin's driving his fancy pickup today. They even painted the floors when they put them in there. How neat is that? How neat is that? Looks like she's got 13,000, so I'm guessing 113. Factory AC car. Hey, is that one of the Cutlass emblems? 
Heck yes it is, the old gutless cutlass. Doors latch, look all you want, but please don't touch. Windshield's cracked, a few spots. Duff, you can open the hood. Oh, you're so much help, Duff. I think it's a 350, I would assume. I don't know what other options there were. I don't know if you could get a, I don't think Oldsmobile ever made a 4Runner. I think they made a 350 and a 455 and a 403, but that was later on in life. Look at this battery hold down though. Flat iron, way better than a tarp strap. Side post battery cables yet, belts are still on it. AC compressor belt is not, however. And I'm sure it's, oh, it's still free. It might even work. Still got the air cleaner on it. Clutch fan, so we can't turn over that way. Well, I tell you what, let's grab a battery and throw in it, see what happens. Power steering, but no power brakes. Dang. Let's sneak back here, see what Mojo's got going on. We pressure wash this Hillborn small block. Finding anything good in here? Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Dirt. Right here. Spark plugs. Yeah. They look rusty. Like the cylinders were. It's not looking good, you're saying? Not looking good there. What are these fancy what are these fancy nuts on? Oh, they got screw in uh rocker studs. Instead of press in ones, that's why they got the hex in there, right? They're shredded in. Yeah, no, this is for setting your valves on. Right, but usually they're that little short nut. Right. This these... here is for a solid lifter can. Oh can well don't you adjust them with a the feeler gauge regularly? Or some people do. People These nuts just look different. And, then, and I know they're thread in rocker shafts because that's what that hex is for, right? In the middle, that Allen key? No. Because they're threaded in? No, they're still pressed in. Look at the bottom. They're pinned though. Yeah, they might be pinned. Yeah. But they're pressed in and they're pinned. Yeah. So they don't. So they don't come pulling <laughs> out. They had a problem with them working up when sure. they had a. A high lift cam or a high RPM? We're about ready to pull an intake off. We did pressure wash, well, DB pressure washed it. It doesn't look like he did a very good job, did he? No. It, but it's all clean in here anyway. But race car engines probably don't get too many miles on them. And then we just dropped the distributor in to pressure wash it. It, it had a magneto in it. DB, of course, broke that nice Vertex magneto cap. You, it's been sitting without it a distributor magneto for a while huh mm -hmm. oh and they had a plastic oil line that's probably what ruined it all right we'll check back oh the head casting numbers are three seven seven four six eight four i don't know what those are we'll have to look them up well i looked up those castings on those heads it's a 62 to 64 327 so it's not like a fuelie head it's not a camelback it's nothing great but i'm guessing they've been opened up a little bit and the block is a 710 block but it is a 19 it's a suffix code cnu which is a 1970 power glide car two barrel 250 horse one of the better 350s actually but i'm sure it's all been reworked over for a race car hopefully we can salvage that thing but we got to get back to uh the old buick here just kidding we're packing orders back here. Thanks to everybody who's made orders at Mortski.com. Been selling the snot out of these uh, can koozies. Magnetic. We got the Low Life. And we got the OG Do. But Mojo hollered at me. He said, you ever seen this? Looks like the mice were uh, getting ready for winter. Oh, and they used the China wall gaskets. What kind of race car engine builder was this? There's water sitting in here, but that was from when we had DB pressure wash it. What do they call this paint they put in the valley so that the oil runs back quicker? You ever seen race car guys do that? We done that, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it helps, do you? Well. <laughs> it doesn't hurt though, until it gets into the oil pump and into the bearings and then you got a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna keep packing orders. You have fun cleaning up your mess here. Yeah. 
up, thanks. You can have that insulation, it's all yours. You can take it home? No charge. Yeah. Linda will be happy. Even the virus inside? Yeah. Well, there was a mouse sitting on the intake earlier. That's why I said they call them a mouse motors, because there was a mouse laying on there dead. I got rid of him for you. Okay. Did you get all those orders packed? Yeah, there's about 30 of them. Not too bad. Took about a oh, half hour or so. Mojo is plugging away on that thing. He's got the intake valley all cleaned out. Let's see what DB's doing back here. Since we got our water tank out of here, we got that mezzanine up there. We got this wall coming to nowhere. I was wondering if we can't build a mezzanine up there ourselves instead of paying somebody because you can't find any contractors. So, in typical Mortsky fashion, we're going to do it on a budget with steel. So these conveyors are out back for uh, auger and gravel, sand, rocks, stuff like that. And they were sold a year before we bought the place. We've been here a year and a half. So we figure they're mine now. And they got, that's a six by six tube in that one. The other one's got six inch C-channel. There's a bunch of four by four tube and three by three. So DB's taking it apart, trying. And then he went and took and drug the hydraulic hoses right over my brand new concrete. So I guess we got that seasoned and out of the way. So that'll definitely be coming out of his paycheck. Didn't even get the pressure washer and clean it out. Just stomp some dirt in it. Called it good. But anyway, yeah, we get a bunch of rubber out of it and some other stuff. Ooh, this one we get a hydraulic cylinder. What a deal. Yeah. All right, back to work. Oh, we get some Bobcat 610 counterweights too. Boy, I'm excited to see these. We'll see. And a clevis. And a bunch of giant pillow block. Ooh. More tailgate weights. Jackpot. What do you think, Duff? Yeah. This is a good job for DB. Let's go do something productive. Oh, it sure looks like these four ham and cheeses were shot with a 17 Winchester short mag. Whoops. Oh, no wonder he works so fast. The DB is a Chad for sure. Yuck. Weren't they finding mice in these things? You know, they, they, they found mice in these things, right? Yeah. Protein. That, it's protein. He also doesn't like shutting the drawers on his toolbox. Another pet peeve. It's hard to find good help. God dang it, and there's my Vertex Magneto cap and demolish. I never knew that on these, but there's screws in there. You can take those screws out, and then you just uh, can put new plug wires on there. And they had some really cool ends on these things too, but we don't have the Magneto anyway, so I guess that it wasn't a huge loss. Made in Switzerland. If anybody's got a small block Chevy Magneto they want to get rid of, hit us up, mortskyrepair at gmail.com. What are you doing here? Pulling some push rods out? Yuck. The elves are coming up. That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Other than all the water that got by them. Yeah. Or mouse piss. Uh, another thing, these are early heads, so they don't have the uh, accessory holes in them. Yeah, it's got the finned aluminum block off plate. And somebody modified a stock oil pan for, I suppose, more capacity. And then they got this. Flexi hose, road draft, tube thing. Look, dual flexi hoses, what a deal. And then obviously it was leaking around the uh, air horns at one point, so they silicone that all up. Classy. But they did put some uh, screen doors, screen over the uh, tubes. These are locked up as well. So if we do get it uh, cranking over, we'll probably just put a uh, carburetor on it four barrel, something of that sort, because I don't know anything about this, and I'm guessing it's gonna be expensive. And we'll probably have to send it off the hill board, unless somebody knows who rebuilds these, or if we can do it ourselves. I think, I don't think there's a lot to it. I think there's just the pump, which we got, and some lines, and then uh, that distribution block, and I think there's pills you put in there, different pills, they're, like they're, they're basically a jet. And that's pretty much it. But I guess these things are pretty much idle and wide open. That's all they do. Mojo says he don't know nothing about them. Don't know nothing about them. Don't know nothing about nothing. Nothing about nothing. It's like automatic transmissions. He knows not to mess with them. 
All right, let's get at this 350. Oh, she's a rocket. 350. We'd play that song with, you know, copyright laws. I have no idea what this wingnut debauchery is, but I'm not surprised. How much mouse nest is in here? All of the mouse nest. Fievel. Just hanging out in the holes. Look what we got in the mail. We got these Mortski Low Life Saddle Keychains. Vintage looking. Yeah. Get yours at Mortski.com. We are out of the Do logo, so figured we'd mix it up. Try it with the Low Life logo. So here's a tech tip of the day. If you're looking at an engine, something that you want to know if it's going to run, check the carburetor first. If the carburetor's loose, you might have a chance. If the carburetor's seized up, your chances diminish rapidly. It was a little sticky, not bad. The seller, the scrap guy that I got it from, he said that it's got a Pertronics ignition in it. So hopefully we don't have to do the Mortski flick on some points. I've never messed around with those Pertronics. I've been around them, but I've never done like a Willet run on one. So another thing to check is if it's got oil in it. Yep, it's full, it's clean. Things are looking pretty good here for the old rocket. It's a 2G. C Rochester, they make them with a side inlet and a front inlet. One's a 2G, one's a 2J, yada yada yada. They're all the same. Side inlet ones are the ones you want if you're gonna do a uh, tricarb setup. And then these are a large base, and I think the sides are a small base. You're worth it, something. Well, While we're here, see if there's any coolant. If they got her hot, they might not want to start. Ooh, she's down a ways, but it's green. We should be good. Oh, there's the inline low radiator hose, block heater, engine heater, what have you. All right, let's put this back on. Not forget about it. Never open hot. Come on, live a little. Vehicle emissions. Oh, what? What? Oh, GM 301. I thought it was a 301. I didn't know they made a 301. 350 cubic inch, two bearable. Printed in the USA. Those are the days. This vehicle conforms to federal and California regulations for 1972 model year vehicles. California even sucked in 1972. I mean, California was a pain to our vehicles in 1972. I don't know. Let's uh, pull the fuel line off and see what comes out for fuel. If it's not bad, we might just try using it. I think let's put it up in the air so we can get at that. I don't even know where the fuel pump's at on these. I'm guessing right front. Well, yeah, we could probably just follow the uh, fuel line. Oh, it's somebody's about twisted her off one other time. So somebody's been in here. There should be a fuel filter in there. Oh, there's a fuel pump right there. Huh, kind of up top. Easy to get at. Let's unhook it right there. All right, Cyclops magnet, be strong. There we go. All we're doing here is just making sure we don't put a bunch of bad fuel in the carburetor. Checking to see what kind of fuel we got in this thing. So we're unhooking the fuel line. A lot of times I'll just crank it over without a fuel line hooked up and start it off a boat tank because usually they've been sitting lately longer than two years. Also, this would be a good time to replace this fuel hose because they're usually pretty brittle. Stiffer than a wedding prick, they say. Whatever that means, I don't know. Never dealt with any pricks at a wedding. Oh, for cheese and rice, just come off there. Got it. Well, now if we point it down, will we get some fuel out of it? Anywho, let's get it up in the air and take a look at the bottom side of this hot rod. See how many rock piles that oil pan has jumped. She's in the air. I'm guessing that mud is from when you trailer at home. That's probably the park light that's no longer there. When was she last tagged? Oh, they didn't even put the stickers on. So I can't even tell when that would have been. Sure enough, the cross members, she's got some damage. A little bit of hail damage on the old uh, oil pan too. Oh, it got the exhaust, so I'm sure it's gonna sound phenomenal. Looks like somebody did put a new fuel hose on it not that long ago. She's a good year. It's got the go fast red racing shocks. 
yeah these things do look like disc brakes when you look at the uh, backing plate surprisingly enough it's got a sway bar looks like the shift shaft seal is leaking profusely oh man that transmission is just solid for burger there's their uh welding they did on the floor pans not the worst job not gonna lie they just laid it right over the top but didn't even cut the old stuff out okay i mean not the worst job but far from the best you know all they gotta do is cut the old stuff out Rear main seals probably leaking a bit there's some more floor patchage oh yeah just stacked her in there the problem with stacking them in like that is uh now stuff just sits in between there and rusts the new stuff out twice as fast there's a chunk of rubber hose we should be replacing oh and that's the end of the exhaust on this side yeah i bet she's real quiet and when i was putting the uh hoist on it the frame's a little a little thin up here that might be an exaggeration oh they even put some bondo in this fender when they patched her up nothing but the finest that's pretty easy to patch though in a bad repair to make plus you could box it in if you were building a show car yeah probably want to find a different frame but i would not be scared to fix that one bit heck i think we'll even hit the railroad tracks with it if we get her going and the transmission works like he says but yeah i suppose all the dirt huh it's got a giant clean out hole so i don't know why it rotted out there that is interesting we may never know bottom of the fender she's uh, she's pretty chewy never mind that plastic inner fenders speaking of chewy they're uh, pretty fudged up as well is that deer or is that oh no that's just foxtail or whatever it's called going to the rear i'm guessing this thing's got like 273s or 241s one wheel peel the guy i got it from did say it was a one wheel peeler some rubbing going on there what's that oh, just a lot of times they'll get twine or barbed wire wrapped up around these and they'll wipe out the seal on the diff but this one seems fine oh this has got one of those goofy uh, rubber sleeve drive shafts too no good for shortening 10 bolt of course the tag is gone so we don't know what ratio it is more fancy red racing shocks uh, silly cone on the cover so clearly when somebody had that apart they failed to put the tag back on so that's disappointing oh well can't imagine why that transmission would be bad uh, with all the uh, leakage and sludge and off-roading evidence that is underneath here you let's get rid of that so now i guess we see if we can get some fuel to come out of that guy and then go from there maybe the tank's empty we may never know i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a rag and an air hose well the air hose in the fuel filler neck and we'll put the rag around it seal it up put a little air in there and see if we can get some fuel to come out the front hopefully it looks like fuel god these are nice tail lights and bumpers 72 is a good year for the oldsmobile cutlass You dead? Nope. Before we do that, let's go check on DB back here. Mojo's carrying around race car heads. Good thing we got this roll back here to just set everything on. Great big tabletop. How'd you manage to tip it over? We stood on it. Wow, you should probably drink a few less monsters then, Chad. How's she look? Special. Bell's all closed, but they're rusty. We did look, and they have been ported and smoothed out a bit so real fast i don't know what size those are 202s 194s 194 194 194? Yeah. you can eyeball them how can you tell because the oh, two right here see the distance between the intake valve and the exhaust yeah you got a margin there 202 heads they'll, they come right out almost touching each other they'll just about touch yeah. they won't have that gap in between them yeah you're just a wealth of knowledge, Mojo. Years of experience. What? Safety third around here. Good bearings on that pillow block. Yeah. Gonna keep an eye on him. How's the cylinders look? Wet? Oofta. Oofta. 
Put the head back on. <laughs> oh, got made in USA uh, Fitzgerald head gaskets though. Dang it, man. That is bad. Well, I guess we got to clean it up and see if we can't get it apart anyway. Good thing we didn't do a whole will it run video on this thing. I think it would have been an epic disappointment. Son of a biscuit. If he'd have just tipped this thing upside down to store it, it'd have probably been fine. Yeah. Icky. Nice. Ew. Oh, yeah, and that stuff's hard that's in there. Screwed again. Well, maybe the camshaft will be fine, huh? That was an expensive camshaft, I guess. Well, you got them solid lifters out of there. They look okay. Yeah. We might have a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. No, don't mix them up. No, can't mix these up. You got to keep them in order. You got a tool for that, don't you? I got a box for that. So. I got a box? <laughs> Hopefully you mean not dumping them all in a box. <laughs> Look at that. How many birthdays has that thing had? Is that cedar? Oak? Pine? That is older than you are. I bet. That ain't saying much. Is it from the gymnasium in a school that's no longer there? Yeah. Probably. All right. Well, you guys keep up the disappointment. Well, that was a hot load of scrap iron that we got there. You guys keep an eye out for some fuel there. I think the hose is right there. That should definitely hit that bucket for sure. Almost got a drop in the bucket. You know what? That stuff smells pretty good. We're gonna hook it up and we're gonna run it. I'm gonna grab my bucket so we don't set the lift on it though. Alright. Oh, we gotta loop her back over the little radiator hose. Come on now. Air conditioned cars are such a pain to work on compared to non AC cars. She's in rice. You ever notice on these Oldsmobiles? All the brackets, Pontiac, same way. Look like they're an afterthought. GM, whatever. Chevrolet, small block brackets. Like they were meant to be. These things are like an afterthought. Way more complicated than they need to be. I tell you what, I know the keys are in it because we could steer it. Sure enough. Put it in park. Let's put a battery in it. See if it cranks over should and then since it's got pertronics which is basically electronic ignition we're just going to give it gas and fire it up just that easy we're not even going to put an exhaust cam because there's no exhaust for mice to be in easiest will it run ever let's check that tranny dipstick maybe it's just low on fluid i mean you know cowboy things they probably never check the fluid Ooh, ooh. She's pretty black and pretty burnt. Don't have much faith in the old Turbo 350. No battery sponsor this week. This one came out of my personal stash. If you would like to be a battery sponsor, you can do that at Morski.com. Using the old DT78 Interstate here, like we always do, because it's got side posts, and that's what we need. Let's get the power fist out. The good old power fist. The pride of Taiwan. You do not want to over tighten these. That's the worst part about everything is people. Oh, we got some sparkage going on. The headlights on? Must be the uh, clock on the radio. Just kidding, there's no radio. But yeah, people. Cranking these down or stripping them out or rounding them off is usually why everybody hates these side posts so much. They don't know what they're doing. Or somebody before them didn't. Alright, I'm gonna go bap the key. See if she turns over. Well, she turns over, but not real fast. So let's just 
give her some hot sauce and go from there. Tech tip of the day, don't try to stick your Cyclops light to your plastic inner fenders. And also don't wrap 16 gauge wire around your steering coupler. That seems like a bad decision. How are we gonna get that all out of there? Oh, it's in there tight too. God dang it. Maybe that's uh, what's sealing it up. Crepes for cheese and rice. When you put your wannabe KC daylighters on the front of your 72 uh, Oldsmobile, don't run the uh, wiring right around the steering shaft. Yeah, got it. Reserve parking for DP. You don't get your own parking spot around here. Did you get the uh, people who paint the railroad cars to paint that for you? The main, pure artistic skill right there. Pure artism right there. Yep, artism. All right, uh, steering debacle, crisis averted. You don't want your steering locking up when you're, you know, midway through uh, turn three at Talladega. Okay, let's give her some hot sauce. All right, where is the uh, vent on this thing? Right here? Seems like a good spot. Yeah, and the bowl's up here, so... Must be a good spot. A little for luck. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. gauge reading oh just about a quarter of a tank three sixteenths should be good to go how about brake fluid we might have a chance it's only been sitting a couple years oh there's fluid in the front reservoir yet so we should have front brakes rear one is dry we don't need rear brakes for burnouts though I was gonna say, let's put the air cleaner back on it, but let's uh, take the 5 home out of it first. Oh, that must have been the cafeteria. <laughs> Filter's still good though. 
Just gonna send it. Just gonna send it! Keep your Oldsmobile Oldsmobile. Still have no idea what the heck this wing nut situation is. And it also doesn't work very well. Let's address that. So I think it's the factory bolt. It's got that shoulder there. Then somebody jammed this nut on it because everybody always loses the old wing nut. Let's fix that. Put our locking pliers on the old shaft. And then just, oh yeah, it's the wrong threads entirely. I'm gonna go find a wing nut. Here you go, one uh, quarter inch wing nut. So right up there with Craigers and Flexi hoses is people with incorrect hardware on their air cleaner hold downs. And it can be remedied so easy. Look at that. You get rid of that silly 3 8 nut that they had in there for a spacer and everything. You don't need a tool to take it off if it's lighting on fire on the side of the road or the float's stuck. Well, I guess we can set her down and see if the transmission does uh, tranny things. No, not those tranny things. Never blown a motor, but uh, I've blown a trans. How's it looking over here, Mojo? Oh, good as new. It actually didn't clean up that bad. Bad, yeah. I mean, good. I don't, I don't think we're gonna uh, get away from any oil consumption issues. But what are them pistons? Are they standard? I'm not sure. I don't see any markings on them. All right, you keep up the good work. Ooh, yuck! What did you get me into? DB's got the belt off. He's just out here hammering away. You having fun yet? Yeah. Still got all your fingers? The same seven you started with, huh? Yeah. All right. Where's Duff at? Not keeping an eye on you? Oh, yeah, there he is. Taking a nap under the pickup. The dog days of summer. Oh, I'm starting to see a trend here. Another pet peeve. Leaving the drawers open on a toolbox. Yeah, here's that other head. She's a she's a little furry in there. These will clean up a lot better than the cylinder walls, though, I think. We should probably test the brakes first before we test the transmission. I mean, see if it feels like there's brakes anyway. I don't feel real confident. Must be from all that compression they had in 72. My Oldsmobile buddy said those got the good heads. Let's try it again. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. That's what happened, I didn't say that last time. Put the air cleaner back on and it probably wants some hot sauce. He's got a bad starter, bad battery connection. It should be cranking away better. the dummy test see if any of the cables are hot positive not so much negative not really either I mean they're warm but not hot. battery showing 12 volts give her a quick test it says charge but let's say fail interesting and I think should just be zinging over 
Oh, I heard water running over here. Sure enough. What are you doing draining all the water out of the oil pan? Where's the oil at? Hoofta. Hmm? Is there any oil in there? I wonder if there's a warranty left on it. It's one of them newfangled engines that runs on water, eh? Yeah. See? Water cool. Water lubricated. Shoo. That ain't good. Well, now I'm wondering if we're not getting 12 volts when it's cranking over, so I'm gonna run a jumper wire over to the coil see if that makes a difference it's not going to make it turn over any faster but maybe it'll fire up i know you would love to see me tear apart a starter today but i really don't want to all right we hook this to the positive side of the coil we're going to hook that up to the positive side of the battery now let's see if she lights off we won't be able to shut it off with the key however There's just too much resistance in the original wire going to that coil. I know on those Protronics you're supposed to use a different coil and you're supposed to take out your ballast resistor or something. I'm not an expert on it, but I don't think you're supposed to have a resistor with the uh, Protronics. But now I think we can check the tranny anyway. She's a little slow going forward. Reverse is right there. I think let's uh, kick the hoist off of here. Move these skid steer out of the way. Let's we'll see what she'll do. See if Duff's up for an RIDE. Now oh, we should probably put some coolant in. I'm gonna roll down Duff's window for him. Duff likes power windows, no thumbs required. These old manual ones, but look at this. Wing windows controlled with the old handle. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Coolant's topped off, air cleaner's back on. Mojo's gonna get the heck out of the way because he wants no part of the uh, big bad holes. See what she'll do. She does burnouts all right. We need to uh, get us a little do it going forward though. Oh, now all of a sudden you're around and want to go for a ride. Yeah. Couldn't even see the back of the shop a second ago. Poofta. Look at all that rubber. Whoops. Good stuff. I don't think I've ever done a burnout reverse. But when you don't have forward, you gotta make do with what you got. What's that, how's that go? When life gives you lemon, you gotta make lemonade, Duff. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, and the door doesn't seem to wanna open from the inside. Oh, it's cause I hit that? Oh, I bet that's what it was. No. How did we get in?
Now it works. What the fridge, toast? You gonna check it out? Make a lap around the yard? Let's put her back on the hoist and see what it is for a transmission. See if we can find one in the junk pile, eh, Duff? Oh, power steering winds. It's not a good spot to ride, I don't think. Brakes leave a little bit to be desired, but they're good enough for burnouts. That's a rocket, Duff. You like rockets? Red rockets? Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is my big red rocket. Oh, we didn't unhook that wire. Hey, what's on the keychain? Village Bowl, Aberdeen, South Dakota. Oh, this person got a 225 award. Is that good? I could throw a 225 in a series, right? Three games, that's only like 72 per game. Maybe more than that. All right, let's uh, kill the ignition somehow. I'm betting it's them, I'm betting it's them race car lug nuts that makes it do the good burnouts like that. What do you think though? Got it. What is buzzing? Stop. That is horrendous. Quit. I don't know what this little box on the firewall is, but it's not happy right now. There. If it doesn't start, remember to hook that wire back up. Just think of how fast this thing would be if we flip the air cleaner lid upside down. Or does that only work on quadra bogs? Come on, wing nut, work with me. Shop's all cleared out of smoke from the rubber burning duff. Mojo's got this 350 torn down. Look at this terrible metal sock that was all they had for a pickup on the oil pump. Two bolt main. You can go fast with a two bolt, right? You don't need a four bolt main. Yeah. But yeah, the bottom end looks a lot better than the top. Must have had a double roller timing chain on it. Yeah, that looked good. Oh, we, we finally found something we can reuse? Yep. The timing chain? Timing chain. Cam. Oh, it's even got a part. Just like new. Oh, it's a GM part number. GM stuff in a race car. Was oh, that? Is that a cam button that they call? Cam button. Yep. What the heck's that do? That keeps the cam. Oh, from, from walking in and out. Yeah. Race car stuff. Fancy. So, it looks like it's got a crane cam. An SS-310NC. And then down here, I can't read that. And down here we got a W1415. So we got a solid lifter crane cam. Good news is that turns good. Lifters all look pretty good. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So, we got a good valve train out of the deal, baby. So now we're gonna start trying to knock some pistons out, eh? Well, better have Linda bring her big hammer so she can knock it apart. Who uses flathead screws to hold stuff together? No self-conscious race car engine builder would do that, would they? Cripes, quarter inch bolts are that hard to find. So there you have it, everybody who tells you that you gotta have a four bolt main race car engine two bolt mains some guys will say these are stronger i don't know whatever doesn't matter to me all right well i think i found out where our brake fluid's going it's not leaking at the proportioning valve it's leaking from the master and dripping down to there so probably needs a master and hoses and wheel cylinders but look at this hoses go from the frame down to this bracket here and then steel line up to the wheel cylinder Usually it's just rubber hose from the frame or in the wheel cylinder. So I don't know what uh, GM's better idea was here with that chunk of steel line, but it just seems like one more spot for it to leak or rust out or whatever. The reason we're under here is we're seeing what tranny this got. It's a turbo 350, you can tell. Basically a perfect rectangle with a corner cut off. That's the dead giveaway. She's a turbo 350. It's got the short six inch tail housing on it. So, I'm gonna go dig through my stash 
see what I could find. There's uh, two patterns. There's a small block Chevy pattern, and then there's the BOP pattern. So obviously, being an Oldsmobile, that's the O in BOP. So we need to go see if we got an Oldsmobile Turbo 350 laying around. The tail housing isn't so important, because since this is the shortest one, we can always shorten up the drive shaft. But as noted earlier, this one's uh, doesn't bode well to shortening with this whatever sleeve that they got in there. So, let's go see what we got in the stash. Well, we dug through our uh, stash over here, and I got this little, it says it's a 300 Buick, but it's not the regular 300, like dad 66 Buick. But anyway, maybe it is. No, it ain't, it can't be. It must be like a three, I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's got the right tranny. Uh, turbo 350, right link tail shaft. Shift linkage is a little bit different, but Let's drag it out into the daylight and see if we can make it work. So I don't know any history on this thing. Uh, our buddy Dicky, we haven't seen him in a while. He hooked us up with it. He said he had it running at one point and said he was sick of storing it. So here we are, I guess. Well, let's uh, get a transfusion unbolted. Ah, oh, the dipstick's missing, so hopefully the dipstick's the same on the other one. Why are dipsticks always missing or damaged? But yeah, it says it's a Buick. 300-2, so I suppose 300 two-barrel. Did they make an early 300 and a later 300? Because this does not look anything like the 64 Buick or the 66 Buick 300s that I am familiar with. But, well, Dick stored her upright, so we don't have to worry about water being in there. And it doesn't look anything. Oh yeah, because this is a Buick and this is an Oldsmobile, but it should be the same, right? Probably not. We're gonna find out though. Kind of torn. Do I take this one off first, or do I take that one apart first? I'm thinking take this one off, this engine first, and then when that one's out, then we slide this one right in. Instead of taking that one out, setting it on the ground, taking this one off. I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way. It would definitely be better to familiarize yourself with that one first. But that one's so greasy and grimy and gopher gutty that I don't want to rip into that. So the one on the floor it is. Maybe we can get DB to pressure wash it before we put it in. Then for sure it'll be either no good or won't fit. Let's hope the old Buick turns over. That'll make it a lot easier to unhook the torque converter bolts anyway. Get our handy handy little red storage magnetic jar thinger. We haven't used the LFA bar for quite some time. And. Not what I was hoping. I guess we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. fancy stands they make for putting transmissions up on your engine hoist or engine stand or your vise. We could clamp some of these holes right here. Kent Moore makes them. We'll have to look into one. And then we'll never ever use it again hopefully. That would be ideal. If that's all it took was to buy like a $300 fixture so you never had to do these again, that'd be great. We don't need this guy. How do we get this guy out here? What holds you? Oh, just a little clippy do. File that away under CS. File that under uh, CS over there. CS? What's that stand for? Chicken. All right, let's roll this thing over. Let's take another clip off. 
try not to damage this shift linkage anymore than I already have. Heck with it, we're just taking the shift linkage off. Like I said, this shift linkage isn't the same as what's on the car anyway. So we can just do away with that. Put that under CS and that. Alright, now let's tip it over. See if we can make a mess. That is definitely a different transmission pan. Cripes. Well, doesn't mean it won't work, right? How many gears does it have? Probably it's not a two speed. Cool. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one. She's three speed. Let's see what it looks like inside. Alright, let's play nice here. good but it ain't the worst either I can't even order a filter for this thing because I don't know what the heck it even is so we're just gonna get the big chunks out and wash up the pan and uh, call it over how not to store a transmission by Mortsky repair is that gravel probably Craigslist ad says, freshly rebuilt, no receipts, no paperwork, built transmission. All right, I think we'll do the same here. Call it good. And we're gonna need a blue rag sponsor this week. Not a snowball's chance in hell that this pan gasket ever seals back up either. Only some slight pitting from rust in there. We're in a budget this month, might lose the shop after that auction sale, so we can't afford to splurge on brake clear. And good. Just like new. Got her out of there. Crank's about ready to come out too, it looks like, huh? Yeah. yeah journals don't look too bad. Oh, except for this one. Yeah. That one's yeah. cooked. About ready to spin. Are they, uh, does it say if they're standard or over or what? They're a cleavite. You like cleavite bearings? <laughs> Put a lot of them in. <laughs> You're a federal mogul man, ain't you? Well, I don't see a date or if they're oversized, but. I guess we'll find out shortly. We're gonna have to free up some pistons, eh? Yeah. Duff's patiently waiting for some baby birds to come out of the uh, conveyor. Also, DB tried dropping her on his head and bending that nice six by six square tubing, so that just got a lot shorter, but nobody died. Some birds that made a nest in there, maybe sacrifice, Duff says. All right, watch me pull a transmission real fast. Got her out of there. Ready to go. Is it forged or cast? How do you tell? And which one's better? The steel crank is better, I saw that.
Hey Beavis, what are you doing? Jack it off. <laughs> I'm jacking off. <laughs> Chin showed up, so I'm gonna make him help me get this out of here. The kick down cable goes into the car and hooks up to the foot feet, which is the strangest thing I've seen all day. Which isn't saying much today. But yeah, we got two bell housing bolts and then the uh, cross member, so. Come on, just screw it all up like everybody else around here seems to do today. Smell like charcoal? Fudge, fudge, fudge. Duff's made the executive decision that since we don't know what this transmission is, it doesn't have a kick down. It must have been a electronic kick down of sorts that we're just not gonna gamble at. Also, we don't have a dipstick. The dipstick location you can see is, is different there. And I don't have a ton of transmission dipsticks laying around like I do everything else. So we're not gonna roll the dice on that thing. We'll save it for uh, another rainy day but what i do have is another turbo 350. this one's got a longer tail housing uh, that one's got a six inch tail housing this has got a nine inch so we're gonna have to find a three inch shorter drive shaft because we can't shorten that one the dipstick fit right in there from that one because this is a bop buick Olds pontiac pattern it uses these bolts up here and here and then it's also got the small block chevy which they all use these two holes here and then small block chevy's got these two and then these two. So, and then the BOP uses these ones here. We gotta knock this dowel out of there before we get it in there. And then we gotta put a different kick down on there. And I learned from the last time I swapped kick down cables that we shouldn't have to pull the pan. We probably should pressure wash it, but we won't. This is a Turbo 350C. So it's got a lock up torque converter. So those can go back on the shelf. Make sure we label what the heck they were. And this thing, can go out in the scrap pile because I think she's stuck and I don't plan on doing any 300 Buick stuff. Do you Duff? No. Well Mojo's got a small block all apart here so let's see what he's got going on. He's doing a little cleaning it looks like. You got the toothbrush out? Doing a little cleaning or what? Doing a little cleaning, yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Look at all that smudge in those nice Groove. Yeah, yeah, fins. Make it look you uh, collecting bearings over here? Yeah. You want them? Yeah. I think I already got them. Okay. I'm throwing them in the tray. What did you find with the block? Got all the pistons out. Yeah. Oof, duh. She's going to need board out, huh? Yeah, I don't think a stone's gonna do any good, so we'll just save on our stone for another one. Okay. Tech tip of the day, get yourself one of these engine stands with a crank. They're pretty handy, huh, Mojo? You betcha. Oh man, all that paint came right out of there, huh? Yeah, she's pitted. Pretty good. I think we can make it run again, but to do her upright, she needs board. What's the casting date? Ain't it on here somewhere? I thought it was usually right here or right here. Oh, I'll flip it over. I think it's on that other side of the block. Oh, other way. Reverse, Terry. Reverse. Bango, Terry. Put it reverse, Terry. Put it reverse. No, what you got to do is we got to hook the drill up to that. <laughs> then we'd really be on to something. I think it says uh, B5. Just shooting in the dark, but I'm guessing that's February 5th of 1970. Do you remember 1970? No? That was a while ago. Before I got married. Oh, back when you were free. Yeah. Do whatever you wanted. Yeah. yeah, that one's pitted up. 
Real good. I suppose the rings were all stuck too, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yuck. This rod bearing I'd be a little afraid of. That was the this one that was one starting to starting to spin. Well, they even marked them with dots, huh? Yeah. The, uh, Number eight. Yeah. Well, looks like we need to find a different block or go to a machine shop and buy some pistons. But we got a good camshaft and lifters. Hopefully you can salvage the uh, heads and the injection. I suppose that crank could still be usable too, huh? But nothing special about that crank, I can imagine. New 6712 NA seal in there. We got our kick down cable swapped out. We got our doll pin out of there. We're going to use our SS1 super scraper. Get yours at Mortski.com. We've been out of the SS1 for a while, but they are in stock, so get them while they're hot. The reason we're doing this is because it's not going to mate up in the same spots that it did last time, so it's going to mate up up here with all this dirt and grease and shine. And get rid of it. The old SS1 is going to make quick work of it. We're ready to slide her in. That's what she said. That's what she said! <laughs> Tech tip of the day, go to the junkyard and get yourself an old retired yoke like this. Cut it off so it doesn't catch on things. And then put a U-bolt or a 3 8 bolt or whatever on the end so that you can slide it out of there that to keep all your oil inside your transmission. Thank me later. Plus it works good for like testing up to see if your old transmission and new transmission use the same splines. I think we're going to take some compressed air since we know that transmission was bad and some brake cleaner and we're going to blow through these cooler lines and try to flush that out a little bit. I know they make kits for it but we don't have one on hand because we're not a tranny shop. How are we going to do this without making a mess? Slip a chunk of rubber hose over it. Now that's thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy. Hopefully you guys can see if anything comes out. Hopefully I don't get sprayed in the face. Oh. Mojo! What? You got your hands all cleaned up? Yeah. What are we doing? Hang on to that hose so it don't spray everywhere. We're giving it a tranny flush. Get all that old fluid out of there before we put a, a, a good transmission in there, right? Yeah. Of course I got an empty can of brake clean, because... Ready? Yep. Get some in your eye? No, no, no. Oh, not yet? No. Give it time. One more. Okay. I think this can's about out, so this will be it. Yep, I knew we needed a brake cleaner sponsor this week. Good enough for the girls we go with. Okay.
Did a little digging in the wood shed. Ain't you them kids that have been whacking off in my tool shed? And we got us some drive shafts. This one was, uh, what did we take out? 59 and a quarter. We need three inches shorter. Look at that, 56 and a quarter. 66 Buick with an LS and a 10 bolt. This is the one we took out of my dad's car after, or when we put the nine inch in it. So I should have the right setup on that end and the right setup on this end. But the car has so much torque, it twisted the splines in here. So I think we got to put a different yoke on here, but we'll try it out. Otherwise I got another one. I think it's a little bit longer here, 57 and a quarter. So this is only two inches shorter versus the three inch, but always save your drive shafts. I think we got a bastard joint on that already. So we'll make it work. Like I said, worst case Ontario. In worst case Ontario, you get caught. We gotta put a different yoke on that, or I guess if we got it, we gotta shorten one. But Bobber stopped over, brought us some pickles and some some deer sausage. So uh we won't starve to death. But let's get a drive shaft in this thing, and then hopefully we can set it on the ground and wrap everything up the upstairs. Oh, we had to go back to the drawing boards. My math is off or that. Anyway, a three inch shorter drive shaft than what was in there is, is still too long. So I went back to the uh, woodshed and what do we have? Anyway, we got some 55 and a half. We're gonna try one of those guys. And we got a 54, we got a bunch of stuff. And I also picked up some wheels, you know? Maybe we'll try some slots on there. Or some, uh, I think they're, I'm not even gonna say what brand they are. They're kind of like a torque thrust. And they're not a Kreger. And these slots are a little bit wide. I don't know how much tire you can fit underneath this thing, but I'm gonna play around with some more drive shafts and see, I slid this yoke in, I had a new yoke to put on there, and I got it slid in all the way in that drive shaft that I got over there, would fit in there, but I'm afraid it would bottom out. And you don't want that. I've never heard, what happens, but uh, I'm guessing it probably breaks the input shaft or the tail housing or something. And we're not all about that life. We're gonna put the right drive shaft in here, so I'll let you know what I come up with. Here's what we're going with. 01 Denali with a 4L60. We gotta swap a different yoke on here and put a new U-joint on this end because it's missing the cap, so good time to put joints in. She's a Three Rivers 157 634. Which is a nice big bottleneck. Good one to use. I could use this one too, but it's got a different yoke on it. And then on this end, it's got the whatever. Different style. Uh, yoke, adapter, yada, yada, yada. And this one, I don't want to use this one because this one I could cut down and make any length I want or shorten it up where these bottlenecks, you can only shorten them down so much and it's all rusty and, you know, it's it's big and girthy for all the horsepowers that this 350... Uh, the rocket's gonna put out. So I'm gonna knock this thing all apart and we're gonna get the right U-joints. I'm gonna look up what this 01 Denali uses and I'm gonna look up what this 72 Cutlass uses. Ideally, they'd be the same and we just swap it over, but I think we're gonna have to use some bastard joints. So wish me luck. All right, got our new joints in. The rear was a 534G on both the Denali and on this 72 Oldsmobile. So nice work, GM. The front, of course, is a 534 as well, but since I'm using this, I could have got a 534 uh, yoke here, but what I had was for a 369. So when you cross a 369 and a 534, you get a 372, which I had on hand, they call these a combination joint, I call them bastard joints. 
but 372 is a pretty common one. So let's slip this thing in, see if she fits. 101 Denali drive shaft going in a 72 Buick. Buick? Oldsmobile. Cutlass. Hoya. Like a glove. Oh, the All right, just gotta put the caps on. I think this rear main is leaking or output shaft on the transmission. So I'm gonna see if I got one of those. Pretty common. Now's the time to do it because otherwise, if it's leaking later, you gotta drain fluid out. Plus, it makes a mess, and I hate things leaking. Speaking of leaking, rear main seal on the engine on old Rex here, the '66 Chevy. That's what I ran to my other location to get my drive shafts that thing's leaking all over and ugh. i hate leaks almost as much as i do flat tires so let me see if we got a joint there a joint a seal and if we got a seal we'll whammy that in real quick whammy! <laughs> Bells and bolts are all in, drive shafts in. Kick down cables hooked up. Let's top off this power steering before I forget about it. And then we're gonna put like two and a half gallons of ATF in the transmission, and then everything's just gonna work flawlessly. Duff probably doesn't agree, but we're gonna give her a whirl. Let's hook our battery back up, fired up. It's pouring ATF out the vent tube, probably because it's over full. Usually you think they take when you got a fresh transmission cooler and lines and uh, torque converter and all that, it's like three gallons, 12 quarts. We got about six in there. So, and like I said, the torque converter should be full. We should have flushed the tranny cooler and the tr tranny lines out pretty good, so I don't really know. Before anybody hollers at me about, oh, you should have dropped the pan and put a filter on it. Uh, my theory, not even my theory, the limited activity I've got with installing used transmissions from like a salvage yard or a shop, uh, they would void the warranty if you opened up the transmission, took the pan off. They wanted you to leave that same filter, everything in there, because that's how it was working in the last car, so it's kind of how I roll. Um, yeah, tranny filters are like, they're good until they're not. So that's why I don't change them. All right, Let's see if this thing will start and yeah, cycle through the gears, see if the training works. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, it's trying to go forward and backwards, so that uh, is a good sign. We're gonna run for a while in neutral, let it warm up and then we'll check it again and see where we're at. But I think we're going to be good. Ish. Maybe I'll uh, turn the power steering back and forth a few times to make sure that that doesn't make it sound like we got a Pete Jackson gear drive in there. Oh man, those pedals. That's what makes it so fast. Yeah, we maybe spilled a little bit about that breather tube. Whoopsies. Seems like it's moving back and forth, so uh, you know we might as well do the right thing and throw some wheels and tires on it. We got some Mastercraft Avenger 255-60s in a four and three quarter bolt pattern. Some 15 by 10s made in Japan. What are these things? Appliance wheels. Let's uh, huck those on there. Who knows what the date code on these things are? Picked them up uh, at a sale. I don't know what a year and a half ago auction sale online auction and you can see they've been rubbing but 
white letters in, these guys knew what was up. Except for those ones that got white letters out on the Hercules. Those are 245s. And I don't know how we can run a 10 inch wheel on the front, but we're gonna find out. We gotta have these uh, shouldered style lug nuts with washers. So good luck finding enough of those, but we should have enough, hopefully. Shine up with our t shirt rag here. Oh, this thing's gonna be so good. Apparently, they have leaks, or the previous owner drained his tire pressure before they uh, stored them, so likely leaks. Where's the date code on these things? 03R. So, yeah, they're, they're pre 2000. They'll be good ones to burn off. There's a little car show at the church in town tonight, so. Letting DB take LS1, the Cowboy Cadillac. Speaking of that, we got decals made. We're working on shirts. Get your decals at Mortski.com. Yeah, right there. The old Cowboy Cadillac. Mojo's got Reggie. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it into the car show. I'm just stuck here working everybody's having fun i don't know if i got enough lug nuts to put those on the front and i wish i had something sh narrower than tens but i don't believe i got any narrower slots story of my life i got some five on fives back here but i think and they're only eights but they're not gonna fit so i guess all we can do is see if we can find some more lug nuts and try them but i don't think we're gonna have much luck all right i think i found enough lug nuts so See if we can't get some tens on the front of this hot rod. We just took the old uh, Brown County plates off. Anybody who purchases a Cowboy Cadillac decal this week, you might be the lucky winner of this license plate if you want it. You can leave notes in the uh, order. If you uh, order that decal and absolutely do not want this license plate, leave a note in there saying, hey, Mortsky, I don't want your stupid license plate. Otherwise, uh, we'll sign the back of it even. Duff and I, I don't know where he's at. Let's see if this thing backs out of the shop on its own and maybe goes forward and stops and the tires don't rub. Look at this. This thing is good. We got to get some better lug nuts. So we're going to have to reach out to the uh, lug nut guys. Not a paid promotion, but... They've been uh, great to work with, so we'll keep it up in there. In the uh, the Blue Plater country, somewhere in the Twin Cities. They probably don't say they're from the cities, but I do. And we got to flip the uh, white letters in. And we got to find some center caps for whatever brand those front wheels are. But thing looks pretty freaking good for something that was about to get scrapped. Now let's see if it moves under its own power forward and aft. Better yet, let's see if it just starts even. I think it needs a starter. Come on. Made it out to the uh, street on our own power. Tech tip of the day if you do a lot of transfusion work like I do, get this transmission fluid in uh, 24 quarts, six gallon. Then get these easy disposal. It's got a little bladder in here and it's got a little turn down valve. Napa Todd hooks me up. These ones are Castrol. I think maybe I got that one on the Amazonia. But uh, Napa carries Napa brand. My old man just brought me some down. And brought me some torque thrust that I picked up off the old uh, marketplace. Funny thing is, the gentleman that watches the show that told us about this, or that actually delivered this cutlass, I found these wheels on Marketplace. I knew this guy, I messaged him, and I said, hey, you wanna pick these wheels up? And he said, yeah. So he uh, picked these wheels up and then met my dad, 
And then like two days later, he's like, hey, I've got this Oldsmobile. But yeah, look at these nice torque thrusts. We'd put them on that car, but they're five on five bolt pattern. They're uh, dated 426 of 05, so they're about 18 years old. Old enough to buy, well, you can't even buy smokes at 18 anymore, can you? You can buy smut. But uh, came with three 235 75s that are got to be older than the wheels. That looks like a really old tread pattern, but 15 by 7, and they'll fit two-wheel drive Chevy pickups and then uh, big Chevy or GM cars like 71 to 76s and uh, like 63 Pontiacs, right, Duff? We happen to have one of those, so we'll see. Anywho, I'm going to get washed up a bit, and then I don't know what I'm going to jump in. Maybe Bernie, maybe the 92, Rex. Now Rex has got stuff in the back we'd have to unload, but... We'll cruise into town, make an appearance. Uh, like I said, it's the GA Lutheran Church. It's, they do a little car show on Wednesday night uh, once a year. So I figure since I'm a local now, I might as well swing in and make an appearance. You know, since how two of my vehicles are there, might as well make it three. All right, maybe we'll do a little walk around there. I'll take the camera. All right, got our hands all washed up. We're gonna take uh, the orange Ford here. We never really gave this one a name. This thing doesn't get enough attention. Clearly, we're taking it to the car show that way. Yeah, I like this pickup. I just don't drive it enough because I got too much stuff, but we're taking her today. This thing is so good. It's real good when it starts. Oh yeah. Look at that old Oldsmobile sitting up there. We should like paint 442 on the sides or something stupid. Every Ford I have though, when you roll down the window, it tips back instead of going down straight. So you gotta help it. Bernie does the same dang thing. Speaking of junk, we should probably put that hood on that uh, Dirt Reynolds one of these days. I almost thought about pulling the uh, sprint car to town with the King, but you know, I just don't know much about the tire, the trailer. It ain't that far, but next time, we gotta get that thing uh, show ready. All right, everybody cleared out. Apparently it's frowned to drink in the church parking lot. Well, I didn't ask, but nobody was doing it. We're gonna let Jeanette cruise by, and we're gonna head for the hills. Tell you what, she looks good sitting by the street, but those tens are too wide. Doug's for my stash. I think these are sevens. They're a steel hoop with an aluminum center, not my favorite, and they're also unilog pattern. Again, not my favorite. Problem with Unilogs is people use the wrong washers like that and like that and then they run loose and then they scuff up the rim and they oblong the holes. If you bought these new and took care of them, they're probably fine. But every set that I ever get, like this is probably the best one out of the four. They just, people don't buy the right lug nuts and they don't buy the right washers and they just freaking tear them up. So that's why I avoid Unilug, especially you. Just for all you people who say how much I hate Kregers, look at that. Kreger Industries. We're putting a pair of Kregers on. They meet SEMA specs, 1,580 pound capacity, max load, patent pending. A lot of times it'll say uh, if they're a 15 by seven or whatever back here, so. This just further exemplifies why I hate Kregers, because how do you bond aluminum to steel and the Unilog design is horrendous. When done properly, it works all right, but people who buy Kregers are not uh, the proper types. Anyway, let's put a new valve stem in this thing and we'll put some dope on the wheels so that they don't leak. And, uh, we'll carry on with our lives and never talk about Kregers again. Just kidding.
Ralph, you forgot to roll the windows up last night. We got 80 hundreds. Because when you live on a rural property, you, uh, you gotta know how much rain you got so the neighbors can ask. Yeah, you can see why these are not gonna work. Oh yeah, got a nice little bird bath going on down there. You forgot to drill drain holes. Don't drink the floor water, Duff. You goon. I looked last night at Rock Auto. It's a 3505 starter, not a 3510 like a small block uses. So it's probably just the nose cone. We could swap the guts out of a small block. But we won't. Priorities. Let's get some better wheels on it. And all of a sudden, the seatbelt buzzer wants to uh, shut up. You people shut the up i got a wife in an oxygen tent trying to sleep you better shut up or i come over there and rip a hole in that tent yeah shut up frank you can hear the tires rub over the uh fastened seat belt anyway we're gonna run it in the shop maybe get some brakes working and swap them wheels on brakes working better i should say we know this master cylinder is leaking out the back externally, so it's shot. Let's get it off there and see if we can find something on the shelf that'll interchange with it, or maybe we can even put a kit in it. We shall find out. So this one's got like a, I don't know what you call it, the, uh, Pin is in double shear on the end instead of just a regular eyelet, so that's something we'll have to note. But maybe, just maybe, we can take this apart and swap that rod. Otherwise, we can we can do something. Let's let's rip this thing apart. It was leaking right here. It's almost like they got a weep hole, like a water pump. Of course, I don't have this exact thing on the shelf. Cause wouldn't that be nice? Let's see what's behind this cap here. Oh, is that what holds it on there? Maybe? Probably not. Oh, it's got that little guy. If we bend that tab up, maybe. All right, come on now. This rips the spin on me. Let's just pry on that spot. There we go, maybe. Just about. It looks like they just bend that tab in and that's what holds your rod in place. So hopefully we can just swap that onto any master cylinder. Maybe we'll clean it up a bit. And by cleaning it up, we're gonna wipe her down with the old shop rag here. Zero out our caliper. And let's see what size master we need. I'm guessing one inch according to the old Rock Auto. Sure enough. Well, 1.03, or is that 1.3? No, 1.03. So yeah, she's a one inch. Let's see what we can find. Well, the best I could do is I got one for a 70 Ford Bronco. It's one inch diameter, same as that is. The only difference is I'm gonna need an adapter for this reservoir because the threads are different sizes. Other than that, it would work. But let's take this apart. Maybe we can rebuild this master cylinder. There should just be a snap ring in here. I believe. Don't go shooting out, because then we're going to have problems. It's not your regular snap ring with eyelets on it, so that's unfortunate. Tell you what, before we even rip into it, let's go see if I got a kit for a one-inch bore master cylinder. Well, Pookie showed up. Help me take the master cylinder apart. She's uh, pretty pitted in there. I don't think there's... Uh, gonna be any kitten this thing kitten kitten meow uh so i'm guessing the inside is just as bad just got done 
putting some big fancy Duramax engine in there and turbo and injectors and just needs to be tuned now. Uh, and now it won't back up or go forward. So you should have put a tranny in it, it sounds like, when you put that engine in. Did you forget to put the bolts in the uh, torque converter to couple it to the uh, engine? Nice shirt though. <laughs> God dang it. Benny, you don't want to be on camera? No, really. No, really. Oh my gosh. Wow, who did this wiring over here? Look at all the pretty colors. That was when I was like, oh, you go, you go from blue <laughs> to yellow with the wrong size butt connector. And oh yeah, my gosh. That was all like the old. This is so nice. Which, what, is this for a light bar or? Yeah, I took all that stuff out. It, it just sits there now and all these come out. There's lights underneath the dash and all the lights underneath the Oh, car. is that how you met the old lady? Oh yeah, I know. When I was, had this pickup for a long time, for like over 10 years, so it's just. Bunch of collaboration of wires right there. That it's be been boring. broken down for seven of those ten years. Oh. Hey, but don't worry. The AC blows cold. Just charges her up. We sent out a charge AC. Oh my gosh. Look at all of these yellow wires. Yeah, wow, cool. stuff through the firewall. Real nice. <laughs> what's 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 this bonus roll of 40 oh. feet of wire over oh, here? Fast pump sends it all the Oh my gosh. That's fast pump. That's real fast. You got uh, fluid in the transmission, or? Yeah, we filled it up before we did it, before the test drove it even. Hmm. Did you uh, forget to hook up the shift linkage? No, we never took the tranny out. We put the front end off, pulled the engine out, put it back in. It's the second time I drove it. And then now I got- So no warranty's off, you're saying? Probably. God, you got screwed. Who'd you pay to do this? Myself and I. Home. Yeah, that guy screwed you. Well, sorry about your luck. I'm gonna go have lunch. Are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying? No. Yes. Oh, I thought you just detailed this thing. Why does it look like somebody barfed all over the yeah, center man, console? The the Some Kool Aid. Oh my gosh, this thing's gonna look. Do you mean me to hook Bernie up to it and tow it back to your place? Yeah, I'm cool. Do it. Duff is not impressed. Transfer case seems like it's shifting. Yep, brand new. Here we are. Here we are. The more ski repair. Good thing we don't know anything about diesels or automatic transmissions. Good thing. I just put a transmission in this week. I'm good at it. Did you? Fixed it. Transfer case. Get it out of my yard. I don't want to see this thing broken down here anymore. Benny, jump. I'll send you a bill. 60% of the time it works every time. 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. That kid, he's, he's something special. No, no, no. I wanted to see a rod shoot out through his new engine so bad. Ah, diesel smoke. Silly kids. I give that tranny two months tops. Better his wife will wreck it pulling the horse trailer. So, uh, called up Napatot, hopefully we can find a master cylinder. Otherwise, we gotta make a line or an adapter because there's, there's no fixing this one here. We tried. Yeah, she's pitted up real bad in the bottom where the water sat. Since that other master isn't gonna work, we're gonna put the old 70 Bronco master cylinder on there. It should be for drum drum, but I really don't understand the whole bail clip versus bolt down versus sizes of reservoir, and so on and so forth. And uh, luckily, when I looked in the box, this thing's got an adapter in there that we need to go to the right size. So, let's bolt her on there and hook her all up. Well, son of a biscuit, it's got a different bolt pattern. On to the next one.
What do you think, wet pup? Yeah, we got some more rain. Freaking gully washer. Came right through the shop here. But we did get our aftermarket Corvette style master cylinder installed. I didn't have an adapter to go from the regular, what are they, like a 3 ace threaded fitting, 3 ace 24, something like that. So I bent up two new lines. The reason I did that is so that I can take these stock lines and put back on there if this master cylinder were ever to fail or if I'd get the new one tomorrow and decide to put the uh, the stock master cylinder back on there. But anyway, yeah, just bent up a couple lines and then we then I don't have to have adapters on there. Mojo helped me bleed the brakes. I think she's ready to go. Chin helped me uh, throw the wheels on. I don't like these Unilugs, you know, because I don't. I'll show you a little bit on the Unilugs here. So. Here's the washer that we used. It's uh, got the hole in the center of that oval shape. And then this is what you'd use for like a four and a half inch. Or if you flip it upside down, you could use it for a five inch bolt pattern. They're flat on the backside and then they got a taper in there. So you use a lug nut like this. It's got a little bit of a shank and then it's also got a taper on it. So like so, the reason you gotta have that shank on there is so that you get enough thread engagement. And this is what we took off. You know, it's got that long shank. And then that flat washer and I thought I could use these lug nuts but the diameter is too large so those don't work so yeah make sure you're using the right lug nuts the right washers if it if you take my advice just avoid unilugs altogether I mean these things are scarred up because they've been run loose before and I just I don't like them these uh, tires are directional. I mounted a left and a right, and I had Chin help me. And of course, 50-50-90 rule. 50-50 odds, you're wrong 90% of the time. And of course, we put them on the wrong side of the car, but I think it'll be fine for what we're gonna do here. I'd like to find some, some different wheels for this car. I don't know. I just can't get excited about those Unilugs. Uh, old DB polished them up a little bit for us today. They came out a little bit better, but they still got a little bit of a... Uh, corrosion and whatnot in there but much better we got brakes we should have a tranny we got better tires than it had originally and we got uh, matching wheels that'll hopefully clear but it's getting late it's wet it's muddy i don't want to fill this thing full of dirt all over and uh we don't have wipers it's getting dark i don't know what we got for lights i know we got a headlight out but anyway we're gonna shut her down tonight and we'll go for a ride in the morning Hopefully you're dried off because you are a stinky, stinky wet dog. It started downpouring. We had the doors open. Then we had to close these because it was coming in. We left the back door open and somebody was just hanging out outside. So we had to go looking for him. And we all got wet looking for you, didn't we? You're a silly pup. Who's a silly boy? Duffers is. I think he just wanted a bath. All right. I'm going to get this wheel out of here and throw it in our wheel collection. What is that thing? A Winston classic that's a good one well duffster you ready to go for an ride yeah let's clean that windshield first so we can see what we're about to run into look at these wheels dang duff just opened the door and i was walking back in the shop looking at this thing them big wide tires hanging out. Nah, he done put them big meat Larry Hoovers on the back 305. Come alive, boy. Them jumbo humorals on that unit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Man, she looks good from behind. All right, let's get a windshield washed. See if the old starter's got one more round left in there. Give her a drizzle of fuel for good luck. Okay, that's a lot. I just checked the battery, so it is not the battery. That starter is on its way out. Let's send 12 volts right to the coil. See if that helps our situation.
Just to be sure it's the starter, let's uh, hook the battery pack to boost to the moon. This is why we can't have nice things. That's the uh, base to the camera handle. What a day. We got the battery charger cranked up to 11, just to show you that uh, I think the starter's on its way out, but you guys already knew that. And of course, I'm sure you all are cheering just to see me tear apart a starter, but I don't want to do that today. Come on, rocket. So close. You had it. You had it. You were there. Well, let's uh, pull a starter off. Yay, just what I wanted to do today. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Here's what we got. Looks like this is Oldsmobile's restraint strap system here. I think it's the same solenoid and motor as a small block. So let's pressure wash it off. And then maybe we can grab a small block and just swap the nose cone. God dang birds. Get out of here birds. What are you putting here to chase them? Out? Hey, go to Mortski.com and get your banner. Speaking of Mortski.com, we got some fresh hats in last night. So I'm trying it out today. I don't know if they're gonna be live on Monday, but if they are, you better act fast because we ain't got very many of them and they're good. Richardson 115s, limited run. And I'm gonna hoard a bunch for myself because I really like them, so. Get them while they're hot, Mortsky.com. All right, let's go pressure wash a starter instead of dealing with this grimy mess. Usually you don't wanna pressure wash a starter motor because it's electric, but it's not really working, so I think we'll be fine. What are you doing? Just hanging out by the trailer, hoping we're gonna go pick up some more junk? No, we got work to do. We'll go get junk later. Oh, this pressure washing pad is paying out in dividends already. So much room to, to dance while we pressure wash stuff. Maybe we'll have to invite that pudding character up and he can show us how it's done, huh? No? Yeah, you're right. No dancing around here. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I think somebody's been in here. This screw is a Phillips. And this one is quarter inch. 7 sixteenths. So, we shall see. Relax. We know this solenoid was working fine. And the nose cones that we're gonna need to swap over. So, as you can see, just took the two screws, holding the solenoid out. And we took the one on the back of the solenoid that mounts it to the starter. And then we took the two screws on this back cover plate. Don't pull this all apart if you don't have to. And because magic things go on in there. And I don't know how to put them back together very well when that happens, but this thing was so greasy that I'm guessing it's the original. So, and then we had to pop this pivot pin out with a, uh, you take a, what am I calling? What's the word? What's the word? Uh, snap ring. That's the word. Two words. Snap ring pliers. Take that clip off, pop that pin out, everything comes apart. So, I'm gonna go see if I can find a good used one that we can swap this guy out. And we could probably take this one apart and see what the brushes and everything else looks like because I'm guessing it's shot. Who knows? Oh yeah, she's wasted. Look at that bushing on the end there. She's been, uh, Grinding pretty hard. Oh, Mojo, I'm sure he could tune her up. He's the starter expert. Yeah. I think this will fix it. Let's go see if we can find a better one. So I dug this mystery small block Chevy set up, and you can see 
one nose cone faces this way and one faces this way. So we're just going to take this thing apart, swap nose cones, carry on with our lives, hopefully. I don't know why I would have saved this one if it was no good, but never mind, I do that all the time. Take our little baby snapper ring off. Let's take a look at the bushing on this one. Way better shape. Clean the dirt and debris out of there. And then hopefully we can get our hardware reinstalled. It takes an act of Congress to get these things fished through. Usually nailed it. Lucky me. Hopefully that all lines up. Pitchfork fondue on there. We gotta line that dowel. There's a little dowel right there that goes into that dowel hole right there. So easy, even a caveman could do it. Um, a caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh no, I not cool. I, did I swear I've done this before, even though it may look like I never have. Yeah, I'm all started. Get the dowel pin in. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. Our fork got bound. So these are just a quarter inch bolt. You don't want to get them too tight. Plus they're going into aluminum. So be very, very careful. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Put this pin in. Pivot pin finger, mo bopper, do hickey. Yeah. You'd think with all my experience with starters, I would uh, know the terminology of this stuff. But I don't. Someday I'll learn. All right. That's all working like it should. Oh, we gotta, don't forget your spring dinghy. And then you push this guy or gal, whatever it is, in there. You turn her 90 degrees so everything lines up. I'm going to steal the screws out of this one so that they match. Instead of the way too long quarter incher. Okay, that one's way longer than the other one. Where's the matching? We'll put this guy in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So here's our problem. The location of this stud is further back than this one. So I have seen this before. Usually they put like a uh, little copper bushing in there. I'm gonna have to go see if I can find a copper bushing. There's our screw that matches. I suppose we could use anything conductive, but usually it is a copper bushing that goes in there. I'm sure we can scrape something up. That's not gonna be what stops us. Oh, look at this, she's a Delco. Made in USA. Good one. Come on, Mr. Screw. All right, look at all these cores here. You can see that one's got, I don't know, three quarter inch spacer. This thing's got like an inch and a half spacer in there. And you can tell by the depth of the uh, solenoid. So we're gonna find one that's close. I think it's this guy for an 88 to 95 TBI. I got way too many starters around, but we're gonna make one of these work, I think. Oh, and then you gotta get the corresponding length screw. Son of a biscuit. All right, I'll uh, let you know what I find out. So here's what we did. We stole the two spacers and the super long bolt out of this TBI setup. I could have stole this whole solenoid and then probably swapped it onto that one and used it just like that. But this solenoid doesn't have the uh, wire for when you go to crank to send power to the ignition and we probably want that. So what I did was I just put one spacer on one side, one on the other and used that same bolt. I could have shortened the bolt up, but for all intents and purposes, this should work. So let's throw this son of a biscuit back on there and hopefully it works. No more starter repairs today.
I'm so confident that this is gonna work. We even put the uh, retainer safety strap to uh, hold all the starter torques in and the inspection cover back on. We never put those back on. Those are like air cleaners. We just pull them off and throw them in a pile. Side post battery cables hooked back up. Let's see how she sounds. Give her the old reach around here. Better, but not great. But I think she'll go. We'll uh, hook this up and babysit the throttle a little bit. What the French toast? Sounded good until it didn't. Hook up the old battery charger. Slingshot engage. That's a problem, I never said that. What the hey? Let's try adding an additional ground wire. Battery cable, that one's too short. We're gonna get a longer one, we'll try that. So now we got a top post ground going to the alternator bracket and then a side post going to the block. Hopefully that eliminates any grounding issues. Now let's see what we got. Boy, do I feel like an idiot. Tech tip of the day, check your ground first, especially when it's super easy, when you got a stud right there and a dual terminal battery and a whole bunch of battery cables laying around. But anyway, you guys saw the inside of that starter, how that bushing was on the end cap. I mean, that starter was on its way out, but I think it would've worked just fine for what we were doing if we would've put a ground cable on. So live and learn. All right, let's finally go for a test drive in this thing. Close the hood, put the air cleaner on it, uh, unhook the battery charger. Find my dog, set up some cameras. Let's do this. I'm ready to wrap this thing. Old Duff is enjoying the dog days of summer, so it's really hard to get him to go for a ride because he's just lounging around outside. Hopefully when we back out with this rattle trap, he decides this is too exciting to miss out on. Slingshot engage. The starter works so good now. At least I didn't buy a new starter. Or better yet, wait like weeks for a new starter that didn't fix it. Brakes still work. This thing actually uh, kind of sounds good. That barking seatbelt buzzer is not. Duh! Let's go for a ride. What do you think? This thing's not that bad. Buzzer is though. Hopefully it just goes away after a bit. We don't have much fuel either. Can we put a couple gallons in? Drive, obviously. 
so we need to find that wire because I can't stand that and it won't make for a very good quality video and you know that's what we're all about the highest of quality videos right now probably put some gas in too oh no see bulb doesn't unlatch Oh, for cheese and rice. What have I gotten myself into, Duff? I don't want to cut it. But I will. I will cut you, seatbelt. Oh. Where's the buzzer? You got a good sense of smell. You got a good ear, too. Got it. There's the connector. Hooved. The next owner can address that themselves. I'll put my seatbelt on though, you know, just for you guys. Because now it's like a law in North Dakota, they can pull you over. It's a probable cause. I'll put your visor up for you. What? This thing runs good. Tranny is nice and tight. I noticed that it is leaking a little around the old dipstick because there's two different style of dipstick seals. And of course, our transmission and the dipstick had varying seals and uh, we used used seals also so that probably needs to be addressed this thing's freaking awesome oh yeah we're gonna put gas in brakes work put a couple gallons in just in case you hang out here all right we got a few gallons of petrol in there See if it does burnout still. All right, Duff Cam is back in action. Let's see if you can make her on the block of the old Cutlass. Oh yeah, we got a quarter tank now. Second. transmission well I did pay 200 bucks for the pickup but I sold the pickup and got my money back <laughs> she needs a little tuning on the carburetor I'm gonna do a little rant here two barrel carburetors they're great they're awesome they work they don't give problems they get good mileage they make plenty of power. He's like 2G, 2GC style, two jets. Real good. I mean, yeah, if you're going racing, you gotta have a four barrel. There's no replacement for displacement or CFMs or whatever have you, but give me a two barrel. If you got a FE or a small block Chevy and it's got a cast iron intake and a two barrel, leave it. Spend your money somewhere else. Don't, don't buy that aluminum intake and new carburetor and then you're messing with linkage and air cleaners never match up like just leave it bone stock under the hood there is nothing wrong with a two barrel they're freaking awesome when they work and they're easy to work on and it's a great way to learn if you don't know how to work on them so rant over stick with a two barrel you approve right Duff? two barrels where it's at i think this thing's worth Put some tires on and get rid of those unilugs. Do some brakes and some exhaust. And like I said, go through the carburetor. And give it about a good cleaning on the inside. She needs a detail job. Get all the lights working. 
warranty is now off on the transmission. Next Ram, four doors. You can get into them cheap. You and your friends can get into the back seat of them cheap. If you ding it up, oh well. Uh, yeah, four doors. Make four doors great again. You cannot, like, so say this was a Cutlass 72 two door. I mean, it's worth 10 times as much money. Like, so to get into a project car instead of two grand, you're at like six grand. And it's a complete basket case like this thing is. So there is nothing wrong with four doors. I don't know why everybody scoffs out of my videos. Oh, it's a 55 Chevy four door. Well, yeah, I can't afford to drag two door 55 Chevys home every week or Camaros or Chevelles or Cutlass 442s. There is not a dang thing wrong with the four door. It's got this, everything's the same underneath as a two door. So you just got more room for your friends in the back and you can leave it outside at night. And if some kid runs into it with his bike or a bird craps on it or it rains on it, whoopee crap. That kind of goes the same thing as not just four doors. That's like the same thing on like these patina cars or whatever people call them. Like, oh, when are you gonna fix that up? It's like, I got fixed up cars and I don't drive them. I can't take my dog with because he's always a dirt ball. But these cars like this, throw the dog in, get on a gravel road, spin some tires. Yeah. Four doors, patina, rough around the edges. What does Freiburger say? Don't don't get it right, just get it running, and that's exactly it. Like we just did right here. This is the first step. Now I'll get the brakes all redone and put some exhaust on it. Like I said, get the lights working. Figure out the safety issues. And enjoy it. Like don't blow your car completely apart and buy all new stainless and new window seals and carpets and seats and quarter panels and all that. Just fix what needs to be fixed. Like the frame rail on this thing we should be working on. God, this thing is twerky. I thought the Buicks were the torque monsters, but these Oldsmobiles are nothing to scoff at. Yeah, like people are like, oh yeah, what do you got on those ratty cars? When are you gonna fix it? No, I'm never gonna fix it. I'm gonna drive the snot out of it, and I'm gonna enjoy it more than you do your 57 T-Bird that all you do is spend time shining. We don't shine nothing. sickness hobby that we got and you want to get into it cheap this would be a great car to start We got too much stuff. This thing needs some more work, and uh, we're not very good at, uh, you know, doing work. So, 
that being said, I think we're gonna coast this thing up to the shop and we're gonna do a little wrap. Not that kind of wrap. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap the video. I guess the cutlass has had enough. Still running, we're good. Go as you can see, I think that's gasoline we may have spilled and that's that's transmission fluid. I already wiped that up once, so. That's fresh, we were doing that starter, I checked it out and uh, yeah, it seems like it's leaking out of the dipstick too, but maybe it's the pan, maybe we spilled some, I don't know. But front seal and rear seal are fresh, so those should be good. Probably need to check that tranny. Needs an oil change. It just needs a, a going through. Like I said, I, I hate these Unilugs, they gotta go. Whoever buys this thing, we should put some different wheels on it before you take it. Or, yeah, those things are just good for mock-up. But look at how much better this thing looks than it did when we saved it from the scrap. Give this thing a good wash job, clean out the inside, maybe, heck, buy some carpet. I don't know, where do you, where do you quit though? Honestly, I would clean it out, throw some seat covers on it and run the dog snot out of it. I'd weld that diff up, maybe put a trunk latch in, maybe not, maybe leave it, it's character. Maybe at, at least put a hood pin on the other side so it matches. This thing's a pretty good car and she does the one wheel peels like nobody's business. Don't scoff at a 350 Oldsmobile. So there you have it kids, we took this 1972 Oldsmobile that was abandoned in a past year for a couple years and we put a transmission in it, we uh, put a ground cable on it, we went through a starter that they didn't need, put a battery, put some gas in it, threw some awesome wheels and tires on it and that was about it. And this thing is far from ready to go, but you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So that's how you make a budget muscle car, budget hot rod, just something to have fun in. You don't need to have a $50,000 69 Pontiac GTO Judge in uh, Carousel Red. You can do it in a 72 Cutlass four-door post. And the best part is this thing's got all the AC stuff there. You could probably make that AC work a little bit of work. So thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Check out our merch, mortski.com. Get yourself these hats if they're available. I don't know. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you are having fun. And I tell you what, 72 Cutlass Four Doors, muy fun. Right, Duff? Almost as much fun as Orange Fords and car shows, huh? Speaking of that, there's a car show in Lemoore today. And we got to go to Edgeley and pick up a pickup that one of you subscribers told us about. So we might go check that out. Maybe we'll put the trailer behind LS1 and take that. Nicer than my uh, dirt Reynolds. Ooh, a bra on the Mustang. Dang. <sighs> they must be broken. Jeep things. Oh, dang. Two-door Sabre? with a 3800.